Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. Suppose you were Sergeant Ray Bailey and found that you were seeing the world through someone else's eyes. What would you do? How would you react if you met a girl and knew that you had seen her someplace before, had held her in your arms, had loved her, and yet you were both strangers? Our story is entitled The Eyes of Sergeant Bailey. And our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Registered nurses. Here's a chance to be of service to your country during one of the most critical periods in America's history. As you know, our army has expanded rapidly due to the tense international situation and urgently needs more nurses to help safeguard the health of our soldiers. You'll be a commissioned officer with good pay and liberal allowances, and you'll have priceless opportunities for furthering your professional career. You'll have the benefit of working with some of the finest medical equipment in the world, and the chance of learning the newest techniques in the medical profession. Get all the facts today. Write or wire the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Eyes of Sergeant Bailey. <laughs> My name is Connie Taylor. My father, Colonel Jim Taylor, is commanding officer of the 34th General Hospital at Camp Albany. I feel that I'm more qualified than anyone else to tell you the story of Sergeant Ray Bailey because I was an important part of that story. I still am. For all the facts, it's necessary to go back more than a year, back to May 1951. That's the month when Harvey Stillman died. Nothing could be done for him. You may remember the headlines. Dying medical student dedicates eyes to life. Harvey Stillman was a friend of my father's, and on the day the story began, Dad had gone to Harvey's bedside to try to cheer him up a little. Dad told me later that Harvey was bitter. Like all of us, he didn't want to die. Great feeling, believe me. <laughs> Still alive. I'm lying here and... My mind keeps fighting inside the wall of my skull, giving my body commands. Legs still move, and my mind says, move. Hands are still alive. Fingers nimble. Oh, Colonel Taylor, what is this death that's reaching out for me? I hate the feeling of dying. I only wish I could help you, Harvey. You've been a great eye specialist. Someone to carry on your work, Colonel. Colonel Taylor, you need me. All over the world, people need my skill, talent. I don't want to die. Harvey. Harvey. I don't want to die. Uh, Colonel Taylor. They call from the hospital. They need you in emergency. Major Browning is on duty at the hospital. Well, it's an eye case. There was an accident on the road outside of camp. What kind of injury? Severe face burns and blindness. Uh, the retina seems to be intact, but the corneas are badly scarred and apparently lifeless. Uh, that's a case for you, Colonel. A double corneal graft. Nurse, phone the eye bank and tell them I need two corneas for transplantation. Uh, uh, no. Wait. Right, don't you see? I, I can be a part of this. 
Why can't you use the corneas for my eyes? Why not? Oh, the... I like the idea. It's cheating death, just a little. I like that. Nurse, never mind that call. You'll be my witnesses. Both of you. Now listen. I, Harvey Stillman, do hereby donate and bequeath my eyes to... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Sergeant Ray Bailey. Sergeant Ray Bailey. That he may use them as he sees fit. The operation was performed as the dying Harvey Stillman had wished it. And then for long weeks, Ray Bailey sat in the darkness of a cave of bandages around his eyes. Sat in the darkness and hoped sometimes, and despaired other times, and waited. And then the waiting came to an end almost too suddenly. Roll down those shades, please. All right, Sergeant. I'm going to take off the bandages. Now, wait. Just give me another minute, will you, sir? I... I'm afraid that... Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. Now, hold steady. You can cut the bandages away, Corporal. Wait a minute. Look. I want to be sure I'll see you again. If I'm not going to see, you can leave these bandages on. A flashlight, please. And don't be afraid, Sergeant. Now, look straight ahead. I have a flashlight focused on your face. That's the only light in the room. Let me know when you can see it. All right. Start cutting away the bandages. I... I see it. I see the light. I can see... <laughs> Yes, the operation was successful, and Sergeant Ray Bailey began a period of recuperation. All his life, his hobby had been drawing. He'd never been particularly good, but he enjoyed making sketches of his buddies in the army, and he'd drawn a few cartoons for the camp newspaper. He began to work feverishly in the hospital, did some murals in the dining room, and everyone complimented him on his work, and he did portraits. And one day, he went in to see Dad for a checkup. Vision 2020 in both eyes. Good. You'll be back on duty in no time at all, Sergeant. Any headaches? No, no headaches. Colonel Taylor, there's one thing, though. My, my perception of colors, it's much sharper now. Well? And some of my charcoal sketches, they're, they're much better than I've ever done before. Why should that worry you? I don't know. Yes? Captain Stanley would like to see you, sir. He just came in from Washington. Of course. Send him right in. I'll come back later, sir. And stop worrying, Bailey. It won't help at all. Come right in, Captain Stanley. Yes. I'd like you to meet Sergeant Bailey. You remember your friend Harvey Stillman and... Uh... Well, what's the matter, Sergeant? Captain Stanley, I... I've seen you before. Huh? But I know I haven't. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand. I know your face. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I, I made a sketch of your face two weeks ago. <laughs> well, I have a very ordinary sort of face. There's hundreds of people like me. No. The picture I sketched is you. Three days after that strange interview, my father was making a routine tour through the hospital. He stopped by the occupational therapy room. Sergeant Bailey met him at the door. You said the portrait of Captain Stanley was a coincidence. Now, look at this. Why, uh... Who is it? You know, don't you? When did you paint this? This morning. A face came to me out of my imagination, out of thin air, the same as Captain Stanley. Who is it? It seems to resemble a friend of mine. It can't be, though, because the person I'm thinking of is stationed overseas. Did Harvey Stillman know him? Yes, they were in the same graduating class at medical school. They were good friends, weren't they? I believe they were. 
But look, this is, this is only a slight resemblance. The closer I look, the more sure I am that this is not the same man. Why has this happened? Why do I paint these pictures? What's happening to me? Is Harvey Stillman still living? Still seeing life through me? Sergeant Bailey, this is sheer fantasy. You know what a corneal transplantation is. We take the lens from one person's eye and transplant it to the eye of another person. It makes no more difference than changing the lens in your spectacles. All right. You claim there's only a slight resemblance in this portrait to the man you know. Here. I have another portrait. Look at this. Lovely, isn't it? I've never seen that girl in my life. I think you have. And I think Harvey Stillman knew her, too. Who is she? What did she mean to him? I repeat, I don't know her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must complete my tour. Dad never asked me not to come to the hospital. As a rule, I stayed at home. On this particular evening, however, the evening I met Sergeant Bailey, I had stopped by the hospital to drive Dad home. They were having a little dance for the patients. It was an orchestra, and one of the wards had been decorated with paper streamers and gaily colored cutouts. Dad was busy in one of the other buildings, and I waited for him on a small terrace outside the ward. The dance music was pleasantly soft. I'd been standing there for a minute or so when I became aware of a shadowy figure near me. It was a man, but I couldn't see his features. Hello. Hello. Watching the city? Sort of. Just looking at it, drinking it in. I've always liked standing in the dark and looking out at the lights of the city. I know. May I ask a silly question? Go ahead. I want to ask you. Do you sometimes have a feeling you've been here before? You've lived through this before? Heard the same voices, seen the same faces, done the same things? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, that's how I feel at this moment. I've been trying to remember, and I can. But I know I've talked to you before. The second you came out here and said hello. I, I almost had your name on the tip of my tongue, but I, I couldn't remember it. Try Connie for sound. Connie. Yes. That's it. Please, step over here. There's something wrong? You sound so strange. Just, just let me look at you. Here, in the light. I knew it. I knew it. You've got to come with me. Where? Why? Don't ask any questions. Come with me now. I've got to show you something. This portrait. It's you, isn't it? I knew it was your picture the moment I heard your voice. But you've never seen me before. This picture could be any one of a thousand girls. No. It's not. Oh, you, uh, you haven't told me your last name. I'm Connie Taylor, Colonel Taylor's daughter. And he, he did recognize the picture. You knew Harvey Stillman, too, didn't you? Yes, I did. If only I knew what this thing is. Why should I see the same things he saw, the same people? What are you talking about? Captain Stanley. And now you. Who are you to Harvey Stillman? No, no. No, you don't have to answer. I know. He loved you. You loved him. Yes. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. You are listening to the proudly we hail production of The Eyes of Sergeant Bailey. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Our army has expanded tremendously to meet the challenge of the forces of aggression, which are threatening the peace of the world. And there is an urgent need for professional women to fill the ranks within the Women's Medical Specialist Corps. The occupational and physical therapist and the dietitians who comprise the Corps have never had a greater opportunity to serve where they are needed most. Right now, there are only a few hundred of these highly trained specialists serving throughout the Army and the Air Force, despite the fact that the need for their services has never been more acute. To the women of this profession, your Army and Air Force offers not only the opportunity to fulfill a patriotic duty, 
but a commission as an officer in the Army or the Air Force of the United States. And with that commission goes the pay, the privileges, the security, and the opportunities for continued study that is available to every officer. The opportunity for a lifetime career is great, but the need is greater. So, if you are a qualified occupational or physical therapist or a dietitian, here is your chance to serve your country in an hour of great need. Write or wire the Surgeon General United States Army or the Surgeon General United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Remember, you are needed now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Eyes of Sergeant Bailey. We sat and talked for hours that night. We talked and I tried my best to convince him that there must be a logical explanation for everything that had happened. I remember saying, Ray, I know this is a nightmare for you, but you're living a lie. Harvey Stillman's eyes are not controlling you. You're magnifying a few chance happenings into something out of proportion with reality. Then answer one thing for me. Why do I love you? Do you love me? Yes. I fell in love with you while I was painting your picture. I'd sit here at my easel, looking into thin air and seeing you at the same time, talking to you, loving the way you look, the sound of your voice, the gentleness of you. Close your eyes for a moment. Why? Please. All right. Now, who kissed you? Ray Bailey or Harvey Stillman? I wasn't deliberately lying to you, Sergeant. But I knew if I said there was a resemblance to my daughter in your portrait, that you'd insist on seeing her. And I knew this obsession of yours would become even stronger through that meeting. You're too late, sir. We have met. Dad, you must do something to help, Ray. There must be something. You've tried to tell me that everything which has happened is only happening in my mind, but here is visible evidence. Connie. The same Connie loved by Harvey Stillman. I recognized her instantly, and I fell in love with her, too. Bailey, listen to me. It's because you want it this way. The answer is here in your own army record. The Ray Bailey you were before the operation was never someone you particularly liked. You had no faith in yourself, in your talent. In your work, you could have been an officer. You refused the opportunity. I admit that I didn't particularly like that Ray Bailey, but that certainly doesn't explain what's happened since. Couldn't it be simply wanting things to turn out this way? I don't know, Connie. I only wish to heaven that I did. Frankly, Sergeant, I, I don't know what else I can do. I wish I knew what action to take. I told you it would turn out this way, Connie. What can a doctor do about these things? Nothing. Oh, Ray, darling. It's up to me. I've got to go back. Got to find out everything about Harvey Stillman. No life as he knew it. Maybe that's what's intended for me, to pick up where he left off. Maybe even to become the doctor he might have been. This is fantastic. You must do something. Can't you stop him? Maybe Ray is right after all, Connie. Right or wrong, I've got to do it. I've got to visit Harvey's home. See his parents. I'll give you a pass, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. I knew you'd see it my way. I don't see it your way at all, Sergeant. But the human mind is most complex. Sometimes it knows what it needs better than a doctor does. Go where you want to. Do what you must. Dad, don't... He has to help himself, my dear. Here's your pass, Sergeant. Goodbye. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Connie. Ray. Ray, I wish there was some other way. I can't help feeling you'll never come back. I'll never see you again. Connie, <laughs> Connie, dear, you mustn't cry. Dad, what if he's... what if he's right? No, Connie, he's not right, he's wrong. <laughs> but we can't prove it for him. <laughs> this is a fight he must fight all by himself. All by himself. But if he changes, if he finds that he doesn't love me, suppose I never see him again. Don't worry, child. Sergeant Bailey will come back. 
And you may be sure of this. You'll see him again. The days went by. Then a week. Ray still hadn't returned to the hospital. Every day I called. And every day the same answer. I didn't know till later where he had gone. I didn't know how he began backtracking into the life of Harvey Stillman. The medical school he had attended. His friends... And, of course, Harvey Stillman's own family. But you must have seen my son at one time, Sergeant. Your paths could have crossed very easily. No. No, that's impossible. I was blind when I was carried into the hospital after the wreck. Your son was dead before I could see again, and I'm sure I never saw him before that in my whole life. All right. I believe you never saw him. What are you trying to prove? I'll prove to you that without ever having seen your son, I can paint his picture. You're fooling yourself. I'll make you know what I'm going through. I'll paint you a portrait of Harvey Stillman. I'll paint him line for line and feature for feature. I'll paint him warm and alive and living as if he were in this room with you. Will you believe me then? If you could do that, I'd know you were telling the truth. We'll get the curve on the left-hand side of his lips. That firm line for the determination in his chin. More red here. I haven't got the planes of his cheek right. They're higher. There's more flesh over his bones. It's firmer flesh. Now the eyes. That haunted, driving look behind his eyes. Not just eyes. Not just eyes to paint. Underneath is the soul of a man. The terror of death, the driving fight against death, the looking out on life, the challenge. You can't kill me, I live on. Now, fleck of blue. That's it, small highlight. Some of the kindliness of man's character shining out of his eyes. That's it. That's it. I've done it. I've painted Harvey Stillman. Yes? It's Leonard Stillman. I received your note. Oh, yes. Come in, Mr. Stillman. I uh, came as soon as I could. You said it was important. It is important to both of us. Now, wait until I open these curtains. The picture is finished. It's here on my easel. Will you look at it now? Yes. I, I would like to see it. I would like to see it very much. I'll remove the cover. Now. Now, Mr. Stillman. What do you say? You asked me to look at the picture. Is it your son or isn't it? My son? Well, answer me. Isn't this a portrait of Harvey Stillman? I brought a snapshot with me. I have it here in my wallet. Compare it with the picture you have just painted. This is Harvey Stillman's photograph? Yes. Then who have I painted? Don't you know? Look over there, in the mirror. I, I've painted my own portrait. I've painted myself. <laughs> the shock of finding he had painted his own picture seemed to drive the obsession from Ray's mind. And he came back to me. And again we walked down to the small room in the basement of the hospital. And he explained what had happened to him. I guess it all began when I was lying in the hospital with those bandages over my eyes. Ray, you, you don't have to talk about it anymore. Now, let me tell you. Let me tell you, Connie, then I'll be free forever. You see... No matter what your father told me while my eyes were bandaged, I, I couldn't believe that I'd ever see again. My poor darling. I was trying desperately to find something to cling to. I, I called up all my memories of things I had seen in the past, faces I had seen and surrounded myself with them, and, and somehow all the faces would merge into one face, you see. And that's the face I painted when I could see again. Of course, the picture looked like Captain Stanley. I was painting 
all mankind in every portrait I painted. It would have, would have been hard to find a man the portraits didn't resemble. And you. I painted every beautiful woman I'd ever known. And it was your face I saw in the portrait. Then, I painted my own picture, thinking it was someone else. And when I realized that, I was free again. I love you, Ray. Connie, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint you. I'm going to paint you, but it won't be like the others. It's going to be just you. All the wonderful individualness of you. Ray, will, will you paint the portrait against the background of the city? Just the way it looked that night from the terrace. With the lights shading your face softly. Yes, I'd like that. I'd like that very much. As I said, all this happened more than a year ago. Sergeant Bailey is now Lieutenant Bailey, and I'm Mrs. Bailey. Tomorrow, my husband leaves for a tour of duty in Germany, and I hope to follow soon. There's one thing, though, which we're leaving behind. If you'd like to see the portrait he painted, it's hanging in Vanderhoof's gallery. You can't miss it. It's hanging in the most important spot on the wall. Registered or graduate nurses, answer your country's call for service in the Army Nurse Corps. The need is great, and the need is urgent. There just aren't enough nurses to handle the nursing requirements of our greatly expanding Army. And you, as a nurse, can appreciate perhaps better than anyone else the fact that an Army's efficiency is largely dependent upon the state of its health. So here's your opportunity to be of immeasurable service to your country at a time when the need is great. The Army Nurse Corps has plenty to offer you, too. The pay is good, and the allowances are liberal. You'll be in a job that challenges the best that's within you, and you'll have endless opportunities to grow in your professional capacity. The Army's vigorous medical research program has developed many new medical techniques, and you'll learn how to apply them. But most of all, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you are serving at a time when you are needed most. So make your decision to serve now. Write or wire the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.